you can talk with me please to Isaiah chapter 4. In our previous considerations of the chapters before this one, we saw that the people of God prided themselves in their physical beauty and in the external adornment that they had and used. We saw also that God rebuked them and condemned them for that because in using these things they rejected God. We saw that his wrath came upon them and the scripture says that they brought God's wrath upon them because of their rejection of him. And in rejecting him, they place true worth for them upon what was superficial, what was unreliable, what was perishable, what was unprofitable for them. That is what they made into their foundation. And as such, God rejected them and he brought his wrath upon them as a result. God undertook, as you saw also, to clean out this abomination that was in his presence. And the way he undertook to clean out was not to reform the wicked, but to get rid of the wicked. He removed them from the land and for all practical purposes from his presence. That is how God said that he was going to deal with this rebellion against him and his rejection of him. This activity of God symbolized a greater and final redemption by which he would create a new and sinless people who will worship him and who will reflect his beauty and glorify him. In contrast to the self-exalting pride and the external superficial man-made adornments that the people put their confidence in, God shows that the pride and the adornment of the new people will be in his Redeemer, not in things, and not even in the people themselves, but the pride and the adornment of his people will be in his Redeemer. The pride and the adornment will be in a person rather than in things, as the people who rebelled against them place their confidence in. The greater redemption was to be yet future. The greater redemption was to be yet future. It was an event that God said will come about at some point in time, not at a time when he was dealing with the children of Israel with regards to the rebellion, but at some point in time in the future. And we have seen that the prophet indicated this by beginning in verse 2 of the chapter when he says, in that day. In that day. And that points to sometime in the future when God will have brought about this redemption and this renewing, as it were, of his people to serve him. The prophet describes God's redemption or God's redeemer. The prophet describes God's redeemer as the branch of the Lord. The branch of the Lord. And we saw that in our reading this morning. Verse 2, in that day, the branch of the Lord will be beautiful and glorious. So this is how he describes the Redeemer that will be sent by God to restore or to redeem his people after his cleansing of those who were wicked, rebellious, and disobedient. The idea is that the branch comes from God. And that does not mean that there is something or someone that God created and sent. 
When it says the branch of the Lord, it is speaking of a person that comes from God himself. A person who will bear God's identity. This is what we must understand when the scripture says to us that the branch comes from the Lord. Again, just to repeat, it will not be that something, it will not be something that God made and it will not be someone that God created. From the Lord means coming from the person of the Lord himself. God should say to us that this Redeemer would be divine or this Redeemer would be deity itself if he comes from the person of God he will be deity he will not be ordinary he will not be a creature created but will be out of or from God himself and this is evident to us from some passages of scripture and I'm going to use one to seek to bring out this truth even much more clearly than it is before us. The scripture I'm going to use is Jeremiah chapter 23 verses 5 to 6. Jeremiah chapter 23 verses 5 to 6. And I hope that you will be able to work with me this morning because this morning we'll be doing more studying than preaching. So it means that you will have to have your minds more alert and more exercised in what you are doing. Alright? So the first passage of scripture we will be looking at to help us to identify or to confirm in our own minds that the branch spoken here of by the prophet as revealed to him by God is divine, is deity and comes from the person of God himself, not a creature. So, Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 5 to 6 says, Behold, the days are coming. And we will see that Jeremiah here, in using this phrase, the days are coming, he is saying the same thing that Isaiah said when he said, in that day. Just different words. But it's the same idea, the same thing that he's seeking to communicate. So he says, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I, the Lord, will raise up from David a righteous branch, same branch, and he will reign as king and act wisely and do justice and righteousness in the land. In that, sorry, in his days, Judah will be saved. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. And this is his name by which he will be called the Lord our righteousness. This is the name by which he will be called the Lord our righteousness. And this, this tells us that this person will be deity. The Lord, the word or the name that is translated Lord here for us in the scripture is the special covenant name of God, Yahweh. That is the name that is presented to us there as Lord. Only one person could be called by that name. Only one person, God himself. But here God is saying to the prophet, that the branch that you will send will also have that name. God says to us that this person is deity. So Jeremiah is speaking of this same event that Isaiah spoke of, speaks of the same one that God will send he calls him a branch, just as Isaiah called him a branch. But further than that, I believe, he, I believe he makes it much clearer to us when he says that this one will be called the Lord Yahweh, our righteousness. That will be his name. I don't think any of us here, any other human being, will be just 
pride in taking a point and saying, it's not me, it's not me. And in the times of the Jewish people, if anyone called themselves that name, they would be stoned to death because that was blasphemy. But yet God says to Isaiah, or to Jeremiah, sorry, says to Jeremiah, that will be his name. So the one that God will send as the Redeemer, this grant spoken of by Isaiah and here by Jeremiah, according to what God said and revealed, this one will be deity, will be equal with God. The branch of the Lord as presented to us even in this passage is not just or not only God, but the branch of the Lord is also human. And again you will see that in the scripture. This passage teaches that the branch is human because it is God that declares that he will raise this one up from David. David was human, wasn't he? David the king, the one who reigned as king in Israel, whom God appointed as king and whom God said of him, David is a man after my own heart. God says that this branch will also be a descendant or he will also raise him up from David as one of his descendants to reign as king, just as David reigned as king. He will be the righteous one. He will be the righteous branch. And this will be a fulfillment of the promise that God made to David when he said to him that he, David, will always have a descendant to reign upon the throne in Israel. As long as Israel exists as a nation, God had said to David, as a promised blessing, that he, David, will have a descendant to reign on his throne. And yet God, in seeking to fulfill that promise, says that the righteous branch, the branch of the Lord, will reign in Israel as king. And he will reign as a human king upon the same throne as it were that David ruled or sat upon as king over Israel. From the two passages that we have looked at, we can conclude that at the time that Isaiah and Jeremiah prophesied, God promised a coming event in which he was going to send a righteous branch, his branch, in which he was going to raise up a redeemer, a man who is God or a God-man, in whom the beauty and the glory of God will be present and who will rule as king in wisdom, in justice, and in righteousness. This is what, in a nutshell, these two passages would say to us.